Hello, in this section of the tutorial we're going to learn how to use one of these additional functions here in the calculate menu up here. And these are the functions associated with finding the minimum, the local minimum of a function or the local maximum of a function. So let's uh, just dive right in and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Let's go and define a function here. And we just had this function left over from before. It's going to work just fine for our purposes. So we'll go ahead and see what that graph looks like. And this is the graph of the function. You can see it goes up, kind of has a little maximum here at the top. It goes down, there's a little local minimum, and then it continues to go on up to infinity. So these guys here, they go off to negative and positive infinity. When we talk about finding maximums or minimums, we're talking about the local maximum here at the top and the local minimum here. So in order to, to see what we're doing, let's go and zoom in a little bit. We'll hit Z box and we'll go up here to the top. It's a practical thing. A lot of times you'll grab a function and you'll realize you need to zoom in a little bit. So that's what we're going to do here. So we'll go over and then we'll go down, create a little box. We just want to encompass all of the interesting features that we care about, which are these maximums and minimums. So now we go ahead and hit enter and this guy is going to be replotted and we're going to see a nice little graph here. And so here's the local maximum here and here's the local minimum. So the way you use this feature of the calculator, what if you want to know the exact value of the very highest point of this local maximum? What is the XY value at the very top of this mountain here? And down here, what is the XY value of the very bottom of this valley here? This is again very useful if you're plotting functions by hand. If you have some graph paper out, you know, you might find the crossings of the axis here, which we learned how to do in the last section, and then you might want to know the, well, you will want to know the, the maximums everywhere. And then once you can calculate that stuff, you can, you can just take your pencil and draw and, and kind of guess in between here and get the general shape of the graph. So let's go in here to the calculate menu, and you'll see two functions, three and four. Here's the minimum and here's the maximum. So let's calculate the minimum. Let's hit number three. And it's basically the same exact thing as before. It's going to ask you for a left bound, a right bound, and a guess. The left bound can be anywhere to the left of this minimum, which is what we're trying to calculate. So let's go ahead and hit enter here. The right bound, you just scoot along the line just like we did in the last section. The right bound is going to be anywhere on the other side of this, this valley here. So you hit enter there. And the guess is going to be just your best guess by eyeballing it where this local minimum is. So it's not going to be exact, obviously, but you just put your cursor roughly where you think and you hit enter. And the calculator is going to think for a second and it's going to tell you that the local minimum here is that x is equal to 1.549, y is equal to negative 0.631. So it's something that if any of you guys are taking calculus, calculating local minimums and maximums are uh, sort of a, a really important topic in calculus because you use the concept of a derivative to calculate them. So that's what the calculator is doing internally. It's just hiding all of that from you and presenting the results. But even if you're in algebra, it's very useful to be able to calculate these maximums and minimums. Now, if you go back to the calculate menu, uh, you have the option to do a maximum as well. So we'll hit number four, and this is exactly the same thing. Uh, it's just that you want to put your left boundary on the left-hand side of your maximum. Uh, and then you do a right a right hand bound and then you'll give it a guess just like before So let's go over here to the left hand side. So that's pretty good it could be anywhere I could I could choose any of these values over here. I'm just going to get over to the left and hit enter And I'm going to go on the other side and go anywhere on the right and I'm going to hit enter and Then for a guess which is what it's asking me for now. I'm going to go just anywhere near the top Just a guess. I don't really know exactly where it is. I'm going to enter. It's going to think for a few minutes and it's going to present a maximum at negative x is equal to negative uh, 0.215 and y is equal to uh, 2.113. So those are two little functions in the calculate menu. Super, super, super easy to use. Um, very, very important and you'll use them a lot. So basically the thing you need to remember is when you're doing that, it's going to ask you for a left bound anywhere on the left hand side of your maximum or minimum. It's going to ask you for a right hand bound that's anywhere on the right hand side of your maximum. Min. And then when you do your guess, you just get anywhere you want. Just anywhere close. Hit the button. It'll take a few seconds and the calculator will spit out the answer for you. That saves you a lot of time when you're when you're plotting functions. And also, if you're like I said, if you're in calculus and you may be doing this as part of your homework, it's great to calculate the answer by hand and uh, and then use the calculator to check that work. 